talking to a friend of mine that I hadn't spoken to in a couple of months <clears throat> and I was asking him what he thought about all this Covid stuff and uh, he was quite exercised by it as I am you know and he's a very intelligent bloke actually and uh, he's one of my friends actually you know when you you've got a uh, an idea of your own intelligence and you know there are people below you and there are people above you you know, you know I don't think I'm a dummy but I think I'm a couple of notches below him in the intelligence stakes and I was I'd uh, recommended the uh, <clears throat> the uh, James Dellingpole Mike Eden podcast and he had a listen and he thought it was interesting and he agreed with much of it and you know he wasn't entertaining the ideas of it all being a fascist takeover um, but such is was his you know intelligence is that he he knew what I was talking about before me having to sort of suggest that I believed all the new world order stuff which you know I'm still on the fence about I mean I don't know if, it's, if that stuff's true or not but you know and he I was saying to him that I thought that it was really worrying what was happening what with all the restrictions and everything and you know are the restrictions ever going to be lifted and yeah, and he said, oh, totally, you know, and he was looking at it from a sort of totally practical point of view in the way that, you know, we have a lockdown, then it's released, then the cases rise, then we have another lockdown, then the cases rise, then we have, and so you end up with this endless cycle, and he was talking about that as being the issue, and he said, and it's the way he said it, he said, and that's not even looking at any of the sinister aspects. And so he was talking at, talking about it in a very practical way. You know, you know, he doesn't know my videos on people. I don't think he does anyway. Uh, but he wasn't having any truck with the idea that this is, you know, this is a, a big plan to rob us all of our freedoms and you know and I don't necessarily think that but I think that the result may well be that we end up having less freedoms and my position is always that that freedoms have to be defended and they have to be defended mostly when they don't seem that important when people are saying well we've got to stop granny from dying and anything other than that is anything other than that is is just selfish you know what are you whining about your freedoms you know we're trying to save all these old people from dying so it's always difficult trying to defend things like that you know and I've had I'm endlessly trying to defend privacy being anti-surveillance all the time and you it's very easy to find yourself on the side of people who are doing things wrong which is why we supposedly or some people believe is why we have surveillance in the so in the in the first place because of because of all the bad people and it, it's a it's a it's an it's a thankless task trying to do this amongst normal people. Partly because more, more normal people just don't see the... they don't see the dangers of it being willf willfully blind to it. And also because people have 
basically just got used to the amount of freedom they got and now think that it, it'll be there forever. And they think that trimming it here and there and having a lockdown here and there and you have to wear a mask and you can't do this and you can't do that. They implicitly believe that it is only temporary. When I look about all the all the ways that I've looked at how freedom has been curtailed and has been trimmed and and you know bits that have been sliced off here and there and the usual suspects complain about it and it gets passed anywhere and it, and, and everybody gets used to it anyway. And that's my biggest fear. My biggest fear is that people will just get used to the new restrictions. And they won't remember how it was before, you know, or they'll, they'll kind of blackmail their own memory in a way. And it won't be, there won't be a, a big populist push to get it all back because, because the great majority of people are, you know, too apathetic, too lazy, too busy, too concerned with other things in their lives. And so you have to, you have to keep bang, banging away, telling people that these things that they don't think are all that important, really are important. I mean, the other day I went, I took my my mother, she's been wanting a new dog for a while. And I lost my dad 18 months ago and ever since he's been gone, she's been sort of yearning after getting a new dog. And she got this dog and we had to, we had to go up to Cobham Services in the M25 to go and get it. Um, it was a rescue dog, so it wasn't like we were being ripped off or anything. It wasn't, she wasn't paying any money. But even the simple fact of doing that, you know, I was conscious that I was breaking the lockdown because it, it came in the day that it, we went up the day the lockdown came in. And, you know, my mum said, well, it's an essential journey. And I said, no, mum, it isn't an essential journey. They won't think it's an essential journey. And if they have a roadblock or something, we may get turned back. You know, I mean, I, I kept most of those, I kept those thoughts to myself, but these are the sort of things that, these little insignificant little things that you do, that we've always done. And we've never had to ask anybody's permission to do them. We just do them because that's what we are. We're just a free people. I mean, you know, we're not defending our freedom as we, sh as we should, but we do nevertheless remain a free, a free people. And one of the reasons these lockdowns probably don't work is that people just, not throughout of reasons of principle, but just out of habit. They're just, they are habituated at present to freedom. And they're not habituated to an authoritarian or totalitarian society. That's not what we've got used to. Now, you know, we, we've got used to this and we should be valuing it, but we don't. You know, most people don't. And uh, you know, when I was in Cobham Services, there was there was only one other bloke who had, who didn't have a mask on. Nobody challenged me. I, you know, just went in there anyway. And uh, and then I saw four blokes come in, and uh, none of them were wearing masks. Four blokes all together. And I thought, oh look, these four blokes there are making a principled stand. I might go over and talk to them. And then I just realized that they they just parked right out front in a disabled space, you know, where, where nobody else was parking because it was disabled. And I just realized they just don't give a shitters. You know, they're not making a principled stand. I mean, they might, 
they might have um, kind of been laughing at everyone else wearing a mask and they weren't wearing a mask um, but the fact that they've just parked in a disabled space which is something I never do and sometimes get into arguments with people because they do it it just made me think well you know that wasn't you know that wasn't what I hoped I hope there was uh, four young blokes choosing making the active decision which has become an active decision and you see how quickly people get acclimatized to new ways of behavior that um, that they weren't going to wear a mask but it wasn't that it was just because they didn't give a shit you know which is welcome in a way but it's not it's not really what I was hoping but we've got so used to you know just going out the motorway and going and buying a dog you know or going to get, going to get a dog and we haven't had to ask anybody, we haven't had to, you know, let anybody know in advance. We haven't allowed, we haven't had to uh, give anybody a travel plan. We've just done it. And it doesn't seem very significant, but it is significant. And it, I might be over egging the pudding here in a way, but, you know, and I feel kind of, a bit self-conscious about saying such things but being able to do that is glorious you know I, I, and I kind of mean that in a really genuine way you know it's mundane but it's glorious at the same time which is you know which is the nature of free societies is that people do their own thing and they're not always there trying to ask people's permission you know so I just thought I'd uh, share that with you see what you thought Mm-hmm.